Hello YouTube, this is Phantom Roy, and welcome to Mad Madness. In this tournament, it's win or go home, and anything can happen. It's an NFC matchup today in Gillette and Foxborough. So who you got in this one? Let us know in the comments below before the game, and subscribe to follow the action as it happens. So without further ado, it's the Vikings, it's the Lions, it's Mad Madness, and it's time to get going. Kai Forbath will kick it away, so the Vikings will be the first team to touch the ball in the second half. But for now, Lions are going to get the ball first. And kicks away. We are officially underway. Washington catches the ball. He's going to run out of the end zone. And he loses four yards on the decision. Ball will come out to the 22. And here comes Matthew Stafford. He was the highest paid quarterback at one point. I'm not sure if he still is, but if he still is, that's going to change this offseason. Because Kirk Cousins, once he goes, he's going to be getting some big bucks. Here comes the first play of the game. Stafford's going to throw. And he hits Eric Ebron over the middle. For a gain of about five, they'll be halfway to a first down. Here's the Lions offense, which is they're definitely the, their strong suit, their strong side of the ball. Golden Tate of Seattle, who moved maybe three, four seasons ago. He's their number one here. But Galladay's making some moves too. He had a pretty big year. Although the Lions did not make the playoffs after making them in 2016. Stafford's going to throw. And the ball knocked out of his hands. He's trying to get number 11 on that. And that's what the Vikings are known for is their defense. They had a top five defense last year. And many are attributing Case Keenum's success to that defense. Xavier Rhodes is a lockdown corner. And he'll be a man to watch in this one as he's matched up with Golden Tate. At least that's how it should be if I were calling this game. Or if I were calling the plays. Stafford in the shotgun. He's going to throw. It's Theo Riddick who's got a first. First, thir first first down of the game. Brings it out to the, tw or the 36. And he had a pretty good year last year as well. Now comes Stafford, three wide. Stafford hands it to Riddick, and Riddick's got some space. He's going to be knocked down for a gain of about five. But that is one issue that Detroit has had on offense is running the ball. For It's been a couple years now since they've been able to run it with any kind of true effectiveness. Stafford to Riddick, who's got space. Riddick with the first down. And Detroit's driving on their first drive of the game. Ball's at about midfield. And when your lineman can win those matchups up front, all you have to do is just walk through those holes. It's pretty easy running. 
and that's what happened there. And they're going to break huddle here. Stafford with two backs next to him. Three wide. Stafford's going to throw. Surveys. Rolls to his right. Steps up field and dumps it off to Green, who in a weird series of events catches it for a second but ultimately drops the pass. And that was the velocity off that ball from it can't have been more than three three ish yards. He was throwing that like he was down twenty five yards down the field. Of course he's gonna drop it. Stafford. Dumps it to Green. And Green's got a gain of about four, and they're going to go from 148 to the other. And they're into Minnesota territory. Third and seven upcoming. This is their first third down of the game. Actually, no, this is their second. They're one for two. Well, they're one for one. Trying to make it two for two. Three receivers, two backs, Stafford in the shotgun. Stafford's going to step back, roll, and throw. Incomplete. He had a man, but he just threw it too low for him to catch and a little bit too far ahead. So, after a couple of first downs, the Vikings stop him here and force a punt. Martin kicks it away. And excellent punt. Sam Martin gets the ball inside the 10, and that's where the Vikings will start their drive. And that's just a perfect punt. You can't ask for much better than that. When you can pin the opposing team deep in their own territory, it becomes that much harder for them to get down the field and even score score a touchdown or even get a long field goal. And out comes Keenum. Not where he wanted to start on his side of the field this deep, but this is something that he's going to have to overcome. It could be worse. They could be at the 1. But as it is, they come out at the 8. Keenum under center. Keenum is going to throw. Incomplete. Threw it into a sea of bodies and the ball just falls to the turf. So now it's second and ten. And deep in your own territory, you don't want to force anything. Even if this isn't a completion, you want to just try and keep that turnover margin in your favor. Keenum. Dumped it to Murray. DeMarco Murray gets the first catch in this one. It's a gain of seven. And third and three upcoming. This is the Vikings' first third down attempt of the game. And this is to avoid a three and out. Running formation for the Vikings. Keenum hands it to Murray, who's got some space. Murray, gain of seven, enough for the first. Vikings convert on a third and three. And once again, once you got those blocks, you just have to run through those holes. Murray was pretty much untouched until he was well over the first down marker. And Vikings going to break huddle. Running formation, and Keenum's under center. Running back behind him. Keenum throw. He's going to throw. Oh, and he had the man on the vertical, but just too far. Incomplete. 
So, gain of nothing, loss of nothing, second and ten. That creates. Vikings come out in the eye. Audibles. Yeah, I think he forced them off sides on that one. Vikings are going to get free a free five. Ezekiel Ansah with the encroachment penalty. Still second down. And that's good because it makes up for that first down and completion. It's basically like that was a first down throw that was good for five yards. So Minnesota is now right on, right on schedule as they won't break this huddle. Just under two minutes to play in the first. Keenum in a running formation. Hands it right to Murray and Murray's blown up. Murray loses three. Tackle for a loss. It's going to be third and eight upcoming. And that's when the blocking up front doesn't work. And that's that's when you say the lineman, your life is in the hands of the lineman. So Vikings are going to have their second, third down attempt of the game. And they made their last one, so we'll see if they can convert here on third and long. Keenum with three receivers. Keenum's going to throw. Keenum surveys, throws. And he's got Treadwell wide open. First down and more. Ladarius Treadwell for, with a 15-yard gainer. And after starting inside their own 10, Vikings are approaching midfield. Clock is running under 10 seconds on the play clock. Keenum surveys. He's got all the time in the world and throws under. Wow. What poise from Keenum. Hits McKinnon for a, enough for the first down. He threw that under pressure and slings it. In between the coverage, perfect throw, perfect catch, excellent play. Great job by McKinnon knowing that he can make some room. So they're going to break huddle, and I don't know if they're going to get this play off. They will not, and so that's the end of the first quarter. 0-0. Zero, zero here in Gillette, tie game, Vikings driving. All right, we're back. Getting ready for this first and 10 after that. Great throw by Keenum. Running formation for the Vikings. Carter in motion. And they hand it to Murray, who's got a little bit of daylight. Just, and it shuts immediately. Gain of three, they'll call it. Second and seven. Coming up. Not a, not the perfect first down play, but it doesn't definitely doesn't set them behind the chains. Well, technically, it does, but I take a three yard gain on first down most most of the time. I formation takes the handoff. Keenum. Keenum's got time. Keenum's got a lot of time. Flings it downfield. And he's picked off. 
He's picked off by Killebrew, and he's running it back. So, Keenum makes a mistake, forcing it downfield into double coverage. And that was just a terrible decision, terrible throw. Maybe he was trying to throw it away and his hand just slipped. Maybe he's just trying to get it over those guys. But, for whatever reason... Lions get the turnover. Let's see if Stafford can capitalize here. So he's going to start on the, his own 26. And in a quick change situation like this, he might want to take the chance and fling it down the field. See if you can get a cheap one. And Stafford might be getting the free five here. Neutral zone fraction defense. It's Daniel Hunter. Still first down. And Zimmer thought it was the other guy, but ref disagrees, so we're going to have first and five. And this you can treat this also as a free play. Although that penalty does give Minnesota some extra time to settle down and figure out what they want to do here for this next play. If I'm Stafford, it might be worthwhile to do a play-action fake. Oh, and he almost got him off sides again. Stafford's going to hand it to Riddick, who's blown up at the line of scrimmage. So that's going to bring up a second and five. If you let one, even just one guy go, that's the guy that could really just ruin the play. Running formation for the offense. Stafford under center. Takes the handoffs. Stafford under pressure. Throws. Ooh, and nearly intercepted, that was. He was under pressure and just tried to fling it to his dump off, but Viking was right in his face. And that was nearly a disaster. That would have been a pick six for sure. So both teams' offenses are kind of sloppy so far. Third attempt on third down for Detroit. They're one for two. And they convert. It's Golden Tate. That's his first catch of the game. Just a simple curl route. The reason that works is you sprint down the field. They think you're going to try and go vertical up the field all the way for the deep ball, but then you just stop and turn around, and that's when the pass has to hit you, and that's when, and that's exactly what Stafford did. It's a timing throw, and he timed it perfectly. Stafford under center in the eye. Stafford fakes the handoff, and he's sacked. Anthony Barr. It's a loss of eight, and now Detroit's got to get some big plays together. And that's why this defense is so good. Even when things start to go your way, that defense can really remind you how just tough they are. Three receivers, Stafford in the shotgun. Stafford's going to throw. Hits Jones, who's got him near the first down. So just like that, that sack's erased, and it's third and two.
This could be a huge momentum swing if the Lions can convert here on third down. Third and two, the entire playbook's open, but they're going to come out in the eye. And fullback run. I don't think he got there, though. Fourth and inches. So the Vikings get the stop they needed after the turnover. Number 98 was luckily in the way, otherwise that spin would have got there. And it looks like they're sending out the QB. No, <laughs> they're faking him out. Here comes the punt from Sam Martin. Boots it, boots it away. Out of bounds. And it's only a little bit worse than his first kick, which was at the 8. This one's at the 11. So out comes Keenum, who threw that nasty pick on that on their previous possession. And he was moving the ball before that, so we'll see if they can just avoid that costly, stupid forced mistake. Keenum, three receivers, and he's in a shotgun for the first play. Takes the handoff, and he surveys. He's got time. He throws. He's got Treadwell again. He dodges two defenders, and Treadwell, 35. And he's tackled down at the 31. That's a huge play. What a way to erase your quarterback's interception with a play like that. And he's having a game so far. That was a nasty juke. And just like that, Vikings are in field goal range. Clock is running. And I think it's going to take us to the two-minute warning. That will. So, after the big play, it is still 0-0. Minnesota is driving. We'll see what happens. All right, we're back. Vikings are moving the ball all of a sudden after the big play. They're first of the drive. And they're inside makeable field goal range. Let's see if Detroit can come back after this two minute warning and stop them. Bunch, bunch set of receivers to the left of Keenum. And he's gonna throw. Keenum, it's Rudolph and the ball's jarred incomplete. Incomplete. So, second and 10 for the Vikings. And Rudolph's one of those premier tight ends as well. It's very surprising that he dropped that ball. Three receivers. Vikings, or Lions showing pressure. And they do show pressure, oh my goodness. Three Lions in line for the sack. Third and 19 for the Vikings now when they're out of field goal range. But they might not be, technically. Depends. They're on the very edge at the very at the very least. Or at the very most. But look at that, Akeem Spence. And Akeem just couldn't even react. I think it was supposed to be a screenplay. Vikings are one for two on third down. Their third attempt comes up right now. He dumps it to Rudolph, and Rudolph, they're just gonna try and get into field goal range. Timeout, Lions. All right, we're back. 
High four bass gonna kick this and try and make it a three zip game. And remember, Vikings get the ball to start the second half as well. As we are under a minute and a half left in the second. Four bass gonna be kicking this from the 40. Let's see if he got if he has the mustard. The kick is no good. Short and left. So Detroit's going to get the ball with some pretty good field position. Not enough mustard. So, Stafford has a full minute 20 to work with and two timeouts. We'll see what they can do. And they will break huddle, four receivers. Well, yeah, three, re four receivers and Stafford's gonna throw. Hits Ebron in the ball. Blech. That's one of those plays where it can honestly go either way. It could be a catch, it could be a fumble. But at that time they call it an incomplete pass. Stafford. It's Riddick, and he du jukes the defender, but another one's right there to mute him. And they're going to hurry back to the line. Here comes Lions on third down, their fifth attempt of the game. It's Galladay who's got the first. And Detroit's going to take a timeout. We're back. 59 seconds left on the clock. Detroit has the ball. They're driving. They're at near midfield. They have one timeout. If they play their cards right, they can get a touchdown. But they could pretty easily get settle for three here. Stafford. Rolls to his right, throws, and he's got Jones, who's down at the 39, it's a gain of eight, clock is running, and Lions are just going to let it run a little bit, second and two upcoming. Three receivers. Stafford throws immediately and hits Tate. The ball's knocked loose and complete. That's his second pass deflection so far today. So Tate's just one for three on targets. Or on one for three on catches. Stafford dumps it to Riddick, and he's not going to get there. Stood up and knocked down. Just inches short of the marker. Xavier Rhodes gets credit for the tackle, and Zimmer's pretty fired up. So he tries to dump it and just take what he can get, but what he can get is just not enough. I think that was just tight man coverage. And this is the kind of game you should have expected if you're going to watch the Vikings and the Lions. Clock is running. Detroit's probably just going to run it down and try and kick the field goal. Kick is away. And he makes it. 
makes it from a mile right as the clock expires. And it's 3-zip. Lions lead. Vikings going to get the ball to start the second half. And no halftime in this league. So we're going to come out for the second half right away. But 15 minutes did pass, so we'll see if some adjustments can be made by these offenses to get on the board pretty quickly. And Minnesota will get the kick. Kicks deep in the end zone, and Sharice is going to take the knee and settle for the free 25. So here comes the Vikings. Shut out in the first half and one interception. So hopefully Vikings fans can get can see a better second half. Vikings will come out in the eye for their first play of the second half. Keenum hands to Murray immediately, and Murray's got some space. He's got a first down off the simple run. And he's got some decent yards per carry in this one. Vikings come out in a running formation. Murray blown up in the backfield. Second tackle for loss for number 69. And so after the first down that goes for 10 yards, this one goes for nothing. Maybe a loss of one. And that's one thing that surprised me about the Lions in this game is they've kind of put some rocks in their pockets, so to speak, and just stop this offense, which was number 11, I believe, in 2017. Keenum under center. Running formation. Gonna throw and it's incomplete. So third and 11 upcoming. And the Vikings are one for three on third down. This will be their fourth attempt. Keenum has time in the pocket. All day, he rolls. He throws on the run and hits McKinnon down the field. Big play. McKinnon's down at the 25. And Minnesota's in field goal range. And after that interception of that first drive of the game, I saw that and I thought, oh, geez, here we go. But no, he hits the wide open running back for the big game. You don't see that very often. Running backs way down the field. But it works on, this, on that play, and Vikings have some momentum all of a sudden. Team is going to fake the handoff. And he's under pressure, throws to his left, hits Murray for a eight-yard gain. Second and one upcoming, they're going to say it was a nine-yard gain. And this has been Detroit's issue is their offenses, or their defensive side of the ball has been pretty rough. I always like to say that Detroit's kind of like a version of Green Bay with a more expensive quarterback and a weaker defense. Right, 
Keenum's going to throw. Dumps it off to Murray over the middle, who's wide open, and that's another first down. And now they're on the edge of the red zone, or they're in the red zone, actually. They're on the edge of goal to go. First and goal from the 10. And that's one of the unfortunate things about the red zone is if you're starting from the 10-yard line and you got to go 10 yards on this part of the field, it's a lot tougher. First and goal from the 10 might as well be 20 yards. Might as well be first and goal from the 20. Or first and 20. Keenum. Hands to McKinnon, and McKinnon. See, that's what you have to do on first down when you got 10 yards to go. You have to get a decent, positive play on first down, otherwise you got to throw it twice. So since they got that 7-yard gainer, they can run here or, or they can pass. So it opens up the strategy a little bit more. Three receivers for Keenum, who is under center. Running back behind him, pitch to McKinnon right. And he's going to be stopped right at the goal, or right at the line of scrimmage. Vikings have the edge in time of possession, but everything else is pretty much equal. And Vikings are third and goal from the three. They're going to break huddle, and Keenum's in the eye, under center. Lions showing goal line defense. Murray, it's a walk-in touchdown for DeMarco Murray. Vikings take the lead. And that's his first touchdown of Mad Madness. So they start from the 10 on first and goal, and they run it three straight times, and it's enough to get them in. And extra point is good. So they run off some clock, and they get the touchdown. Perfect drive for the Vikings. And now Detroit has to answer here. Correction, Latavius Murray, not DeMarco Murray. Brain fart. Washington takes the knee. And out comes the Lions offense trying to answer Minnesota. So they went in, so Minnesota went in at the halftime and they figured out something that worked. Let's see if Detroit did the same thing. Of course, they have to try it now, near the end of the third, but better late than never. Three receivers for Stafford, who hands it to Riddick, and Riddick only gets one. Second and nine coming up for the Lions. You just can't help but shake the feeling that with Minnesota's defense, it's going to be tough for the Lions here on second and nine. Down. Stafford throws deep downfield. Hits Roberts. He's got the first and about 10 yards more. They're at midfield on their own 47. So, 
perfect timing by me <laughs> on that call, but sometimes you gotta take those hot takes, you know? Riddick's got space up the gut. And just like that, they're in field goal range. So maybe they did figure something out, out at halftime. We'll see if they get another playoff before the end of the third. Under five seconds. They will not. So that's going to do it for the third quarter as we head into the fourth. It's a good one so far, if a little bit scoring, a little bit low scoring. Vikings up 7 3, Lions with the ball driving. And we're back. Vikings lead, but Lions are driving already in field goal range. Let's see what they can do here on first down on for the first play of this, the fourth quarter. Stafford has three receivers. Stafford throws incomplete he was covered three receivers for Stafford Stafford Throws over the middle, hits Galladay. Kenny Galladay has a gain of 15, out to the 23, and they're on the edge of the, the red zone. And I think this is going to be the drive that keeps the Lions in this game to the very end. Whatever happens on this drive, whether they kick the field goal, whether they get the touchdown, I just can't help but feeling this is the drive that's going to decide the game. It's early, but think about it. They can get the lead here, or they can be down one point. In Minnesota, that has all the time. They just had a five-minute drive. They, no reason to think they can't do it again, and that's a small reception for the Lions. Eric Ebron, gain of five. Now they're in the red zone. 17 yard line. Four receivers for Stafford as he comes out. Ready to throw. He's going to throw. Steps up in the pocket, rolls to the right, and he's. they're going to give him a one yard gain. They will not call that a sack as he's brought down from behind, tripped up. By number 99, Hunter. So now we have a third and three, which will be very critical in the scheme of this game. They're three for five, trying to make it four, four, six. Stafford. And he throws the pick. Killer pick, and uh, <laughs> Gideon is gone. 20, 10, pick six, Minnesota. What a deflating play right there. So he tries to get the dump off like earlier in that, that one play earlier in the game, but instead of 
dropping the interception. The Vikings get it this time. He just breaks on the route, reads the quarterback's eyes, knows what he's going to do, and he just, he's gone. So just like that, Minnesota <laughs> is going to kick the ball off again and say, try it again, buddy. Jim Caldwell's really fired up. Here comes the extra point. Four bath is good. So 14 to three, Detroit. It has fallen behind now by two possessions. And there's that Minnesota defense coming in clutch. So Detroit had time before, now they really do not. They need a perfect game from here on out if they want to win this thing. Washington's going to run it out from deep in his own territory. And he breaks the tackle, and he's got a good return out to the 30. So that's going to be about a 40-yard return. And here comes Stafford. Feels like he was just doing this before that pick six. So let's see if he can overcome here late in the fourth. Well, I guess with seven minute quarters, you're, you're still over halfway in the fourth, but late in the game. Three receivers for the Lions as Stafford's in the shotgun. Stafford surveys. He's looking deep. He's got his receiver. And the clock's running. That's a gain. Out to the 44. That's his first reception of the day. I think it was just another curl route. It was. Good play call. That's how you fake out Xavier Rhodes. Not an easy man to fake out. Three receivers. Stafford in the shotgun. Stafford surveys. He's got time. Throws and hits Galladay on the run, but the ball falls incomplete. Second and ten coming up. I like that play call. So you call the curl, and then you actually do try and run upfield. But the hit jarred it loose, and it's second and ten. The clock is stopped, though. For the first time in this game, Stafford's alone in the shotgun. Stafford. Throws to the sideline. Hits Ebron. Are they going to say it's a catch? They will. First down. And Detroit. Driving. Good job by him leading it over Anthony Barr. If he throws that maybe a two feet farther that had a chance to go the distance but still a good throw as it is and it's going to be a good gainer and you can see right there seven passes or seven runs to 30 or 23 passes seven runs to 23 passes and that's a terrible time for that but as I was saying before when it's three to one, pass to run. It's tough to win, especially against this ball hawking secondary. And that's what Detroit's problem has been. Not being able to run the ball and set themselves up in downs where they don't need to throw the ball 10, eight, seven yards. Stafford. Rolls right. Throws across his body, incomplete. And that man wasn't open anyway, so I think he was just trying to throw that away. Preserve the clock, avoid the sack. So 
so just under three minutes. Three receivers, Stafford in the shotgun, flanked by two running backs, Stafford. It's Riddick, and the ball falls incomplete. So just like that, it's going to be third and very long. And I think they're in four down territory, so that should comfort the offense a little bit on this play. Got tight press coverage. Stafford hits Jones on the slant, and they'll take what they can get on third down. It's fourth. And they're inside field goal range, so I suppose they can settle for the field goal here and try and get the two point. Get the ball back and get the touchdown two point conversion to tie it. And that's what they're going to try. So they're going to kick it from the 42-yard line or so. Kicks away. Kick. He missed it. He missed it. It was. He had the distance just to the right. Just a little bit wide right. Ouch. And that's really going to put him in a hole. Had to have it, but they could not get it. And now Vikings are in pretty good shape here. And if they get a first down here, this game is over. It probably is already over, but it'll be kneeling time. Which you don't really see very often in the NFL. Usually you get to one side, usually goes down to the wire, but not in this game. Keenan hands it to Murray. And that's going to take us to the two minute warning. So we'll watch the rest of this one after this. Minnesota leads 14 to 3. All right, we're back. And unless something crazy happens on this play, Detroit will likely lose this game and be eliminated. Three receivers, Keenum under center. And I think the Lions jumped off sides. And it's Anthony Zettel. So it'll bring it out to the 50. And it'll be second and three. And Detroit really just needs a fumble here. Detroit. If they want any chance of winning this game, they need a they need a fumble, and then they need a quick touchdown, and then they need an onside kick, or they need a three and out. There's a lot of things that has to go right for Detroit at this point. I formation for Keenum, who hands it to Murray, who's blown up in the backfield, but it will not matter that much. Third and five coming up. So third down, third and five. Vikings are three for five so far. Trying to make it four for six. Keenum's going to come out 
With four receivers, he might throw. He's going to throw on this play. It's a screen. Hits it. Hits as he releases it. And McKinnon, he's gone. Jarek McKinnon. Gets a touchdown. And this game's over. Good job by Keenum standing in there and taking that hit. And good job by McKinnon executing that juke move. So Keenum finishes the day one touchdown and one interception. Unless something really crazy happens here. But it is a smart play call by the Vikings to call that. Because Lions are going to be blitzing trying to get that fumble and Vikings now can basically as long as they don't give up nah it's over <laughs> nah it's over Kai for the extra point attempt and it's good so their best offense their quickest offensive drive happens when they're trying to run the clock out. <laughs> and it's 21-3. So if nothing crazy happens, I can show you the, the bracket. Right there, but right before we get the kickoff, it's going to be on your bottom right-hand corner of the screen where it says NFC North, right above NFC South. And it kicks away. I'll show you that once more. Washington's going to take the knee. So, as I was saying, bottom right-hand corner. And the first round is almost over. We have, let's see, one, two, three, four games left. Right? One... Two, three, four. Yep. So I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. This game's kind of gone by the <laughs> gone by the wayside, but this is only one of two games that has happened out of sixteen. That's a pretty good ratio. So we'll see these last couple plays and see if Stafford can get something to help his stats. And that's incomplete. And Barr's had a pretty big game in this one. Five tackles and two deflections. That does stop the clock. Minute 43 left in the fourth. And if the score holds, this will be the second biggest blowout in Madden Madness. The biggest being Kansas City Chiefs versus uh, Sandy, or Los, Los Angeles Chargers. Where the score was 21 to 0. So Detroit avoids the, sh the, the shutout. And they'll avoid getting the worst blowout in Madden Madness history. As long as they don't give up, give up a touchdown and don't score any points here. Detroit is 3-4-7 thir on third down. And we'll see if they can make it 4-8. for eight. Three receivers. Stafford. Stafford hits Galladay near the sideline who falls out of bounds even though I guess they'll say he was still in bounds and Stafford's going to come in in the shotgun he's going to throw once again he's got time in the pocket he's going to dump it to Theo Riddick who runs out of bounds to stop the clock immediately and they're going to say he got nothing So Stafford gets an extra completion to help his percentage, but no yards. 
And Detroit's only got one more timeout left. As Stafford comes out in the shotgun, flanked by two running backs. Stafford dumps it off to Ebron over the middle, who holds on to the ball. And Stafford's got 32 attempts in this game. And remember, this game's about half the length of an actual NFL game, so he's on pace to throw 64 times. <laughs> and here's a flag as the man's taken down. We'll see what this is about. And Minnesota gives up their first defensive penalty of the game. Or maybe it's their second. It's their biggest mistake on defense for sure in this game. And that'll result in the first down. So Lions have had nine attempts on third down in this game. So Stafford on the draw, hands it to Green, which fakes nobody out. Loss of two on the play, clock's running. Stafford's going to hurry up, back under center, and he's going to spike here to stop the clock. So... Were you right about who you thought was going to win? Did you like the video? Let us know. Leave a comment. Leave a like. And subscribe if you want to see how far the Vikings can go. We thought we were going to see them in the Super Bowl last year. Or a couple months ago. But we'll see if they can do something in Mad Madness. And that ball going for the home shot. Or what am I saying? The home run. Is batted around and falls incomplete. And it bounces harmlessly into the end zone. Trey Waynes. Oh, gets credit for the defense on that. And fourth and 12. This is probably going to be Detroit's last chance to get points. And get some pride. And boost their pride, I should say. As Stafford comes out with three receivers. And we're going to have a false start. So that'll back him up even more. False start offense. Stafford and nearly picked the results the same though it's a turnover on downs and Minnesota should just kneel the ball and, and just end this end this one Here comes Case Keenum. He's only had to throw 14 times in this one, but he has 200 yards, and his touchdown to interception ratio is 1 to 1. It was a close game if you skip to the end of the video. It was close until about. It was near the beginning of the fourth quarter when the Lions. Quarterback Stafford threw a pick six, and then on the ensuing drive, couldn't convert. And then Minnesota, when trying to run the clock out, ended up getting a breakaway screen touchdown. So it was like it was it was closer for most of the game than the score would indicate. Everything just went Minnesota's way, and the Lions are officially eliminated. From Mad Madness.
We'll put a solid three quarters together, but not enough to keep up with the Vikings who ultimately pulled away in the fourth. So there we have it. The Vikings win 23 to 3 or 21 to 3. And so they'll get to move on to the next round. So was your prediction right? Let us know in the comments. And if you want to see the Vikings in their next game, click subscribe. Like the video if you enjoyed it. And until next time, this is Phantom Roy saying, have a good one.